Hello and welcome back to My Mom's Basement. I am here with the main eventer of this week's upcoming Rough and Rowdy 14. I cannot wait for this card. I'm a commentator on the card and I get really excited for every Rough and Rowdy. You get that fight week energy, but this one feels a little bit bigger because as a professional wrestling fan, I mean, it doesn't get bigger than this for me and Rough and Rowdy the crossover. We've got Swoggle, aka Dylan Postle. Is it Dylan Postle or Postal? Am I saying that wrong? Thank you for saying Postal. Uh, everyone says Postal. Okay, it's I thought postal. it was Postal. There's no A and no E. I hate it, but it's happened all my life. <laughs> I'm sure. Teachers reading the attendance. Uh, Dylan, oh, it's Postal. It, yeah, always, always. Especially the substitute teacher when they would come in, and then you're just an idiot. Of, and then everyone laughs when, when she says your name wrong. It's like, it's not my fault. Why are you for, laughing at me? Yeah, and then it, they think they're laughing at me because of my size. And it's no dumb fuck. It's because... You fucked up my name. Fucking Pardon me. Can we swear on this? Absolutely. Say whatever you want. Okay. You're getting me pissed off at those motherfuckers. Shit, cunt cock. <laughs> How are you, man? This has been uh, it's been a crazy year, right? And especially for someone like yourself where you, you're doing comedy, you're doing wrestling, you're promoting wrestling. So much of your life revolves around people getting together and having a good time. And that got stripped away from us. So how's the last year been for you? It's been awesome. Like surprisingly awesome. Yeah, uh, good. Yeah, it really is. And it's, I still kept busy, like as much as I can, either with my stuff online or, or, or just in general. Um, I've had a lot of time with my, with my son. That's been great. He's now, I think he, this is the seventh week he's back to in-person school full-time, which is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. They really need that. They really do need that. But like the 50, 50 and the virtual, I mean, it, it, I felt so bad for him, but man, I, I love spending time with him. He's He's the best. He's 11 going on 15, uh, <laughs> but he's just the man. He really is. And he's, he's, he's my favorite human being on the planet. And uh, he, it's just been, it's been, I mean, it's been all okay. January and February were rough, but since pandemic hit, those were the only two months where it's really hit, hit and affected me. Um, but it's all right. We're, we're getting back to normal. I feel, I feel like we're at the top of that, weird hill and we're looking down yeah and what we're looking down at is normality i don't know if that's a word i'm not good with words normality <laughs> sounds okay but i feel like we're looking at at normal life again or what is supposed to be normal i mean um, i i assume he does but does your son know that you're fighting on friday yeah and he hates it does he really i was gonna ask like is he a uh, fan of this is he like really. go kick his ass dad or uh, is he like oh my uh, god he he saw the video of jeremy and he goes, Dad, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Gosh, you're gonna die. I said, Thanks for the confidence, buddy. Like, uh, but yeah, if it makes you feel any better, UFC champion Michael Bisping, his sons would always pick against him, and he would always win the fight when they would do do so. So maybe that's like you know the father son curse in some way. I would. I'm always one to want to surprise people. I'm always one to. Um, I mean, throughout my life, deny me doubt me i'll shove it right up your ass like it's going to happen and whether or not it happens on friday i don't know uh i don't i've been training the hardest i ever have in my life for the last seven weeks since we announced the fight actually since i signed on for the fight we it took a while to announce march madness killed barstool but it was a little bit busy for barstool yeah. but uh then we got to announce the fight and man it's just been like the craziest two weeks of my life the last two weeks i had a i ran a wrestling event on saturday in oshkosh for my company acw wisconsin we had 1100 people there we had kevin nash we were supposed to have icp they didn't show up we had uh, <laughs> indie wrestling huh that's indie wrestling for you isn't it i mean it shouldn't be yeah but it, uh but um it was amazing so it looked know. amazing we saw videos from oh, coach Suggs was out there and it, it looked yeah, like yeah, coach it, was it, there. it's like wrestling it's, it's back yeah. you know yeah and it's uh you know what we did it extremely safe everyone everyone that came up to me i, I legit asked him because i mean I'm, I'm the owner and the promoter i have yeah. to ask him, hey man do you guys feel safe is there anything else we can do to make you feel safe uh, and they said no this is amazing i feel way more safe here than i do at going to walmart like it's it's that's what we want and the, yeah. the issue is is we just 
we we need if I can bring a little bit of normalcy back for a couple hours a month and make people forget about the shitty stuff that's going on. I'm going to do that and I'm going to, but I'm going to do it as safely as we can. Matt, I mean, it was awesome. It was so much fun. I'm so sore from it still. <laughs> we went to the after party that night and I sat on the bar stools and these are the most like uncomfortable bar stools most times, but that night it felt like I was sitting on a cloud because <laughs> I burnt out. I took three naps uh, yesterday and I hate taking naps. I hate them. Anyone that knows me will tell you, I hate naps. Uh, they're a waste of time and they make me feel worse. But God dang it, yesterday I couldn't was, be more opposite in that way. I oh, love, really? I, I love I, me I a nice nap, them. nice like, power nap. Oh my God. I don't know if I feel like it's such a, like an old man adult thing that I can't like these. I, just, <laughs> I hate them. I, I wake up more tired than ever. Uh, I, it's, but it's, and I was pissed because I really wanted to get a workout in yesterday because I'm, this is, I mean, this is, this is it. We're at crunch time now, baby. Yeah. We're five days away from the fight of my life and to, you know, to turn it all around back to the target we're at here. This is the craziest week of my life. Uh, I'm not a fighter. No. Jeremy Smith. I like, I, and, and like, he's, 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 have you ever out. been in a fight before? I've never been punched in the face in my life. Wow. Ever. Uh, and Jeremy Smith hits hard. I mean, he's okay. He hits pretty hard. He's okay. Listen, as an unbiased commentator for Rough and Rowdy, who is, I mean, listen, I, I have the utmost respect he for Jeremy as a fighter. Me. I like him a lot. No, 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 listen, no, no, listen, 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 li listen to the end of this sentence. You gotta listen to the end of this sentence, Swoggle. I don't care. Join the other side like everyone is. Like I say, he's really strong. I get it. I get it. And, but he's fought twice. Twice. I, but, but the end of my sentence was going to be that as the unbiased commentator who respects him, I have to join your side in this fight. I have to be in your corner for this fight because I'm such a big fan of yours. I grew up as such a big fan of yours. I was there for WLC. I was in the building. Really? I was there for your match against Grado. I ran the spotlight for your entrance in that match at Wrestle Pro at the Rawway Rec Center. So I have to be in Swaggle's corner. All right. Now I'm not as angry at you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone's everyone's kind of, like you said, everyone's counting you out. Everyone's doubting you. I saw a video from Barstool today where a bunch of people from my office were saying, oh my God. No, how about, how about the world's they, strongest? They, they, He's got to win. Thing? Dylan, uh, I hope the best for you, my friend. Uh, you've been a, a great friend for a long time, but... I think you're gonna get knocked out by this guy. <laughs> this guy, I would be scared to box this guy. So I fear for Dylan. I fear for his uh, his safety. That was from my interview. I, I literally- Oh, you him. did that? Yeah, oh, I, I thought I thought you guys were friends. I thought I was friends with that son of a bitch too. He turned his back on me. Unbelievable. I mean, he, he said, are you even training? He said, you're gonna get knocked out. That's fine. Again, doubt me. And guess what? He better be the first but person that gets the video out. of your win, by the way. You better send him that video of your hand getting raised. Well, let's be honest here. If I do get knocked out, I'm still getting paid. That's and in true. the end, it's not, it's not that bad of a gig. And you can confirm, right, for us that you're not going to take a dive like Jose Canseco. I will never. <laughs> I am a decent human being, unlike Jose Canseco. <laughs> That was shitty last time. What have your other friends said about you accepting this fight? I've seen some tweets from Brian Myers. I've seen some tweets from Ethan Page. Like, what's the what's the reaction when you signed on for this? So I told, like, two people. I didn't tell my parents until Easter. They were gone for, like, another month uh, down in Florida. And I was, like, training. And my son almost let it slip. And I said, don't, because I didn't want them to worry while they're on vacation. And I was like, so I told him when I, I was on Easter Sunday, we, uh, we got together for, for brunch. And I said, I'm boxing. And they go, what? <laughs> my dad kind of laughed it off. And my mom just, why do you do these things? <laughs> like, but it's, it's fine. Like, I'll be honest. I was partly worried when I signed up. I'm not as worried anymore. Uh, it's going to be fun. This is going to be the biggest rough and rowdy ever and not to be egotistical but when you need a main event player you call the little guy in here we go i'm not going to be a canseco a washed up 
guy who just takes the money and runs 27 or 23 seconds in, whatever it was. Yeah, it was wrong. I, it's just, it's bullshit. Plain and simple, it's bullshit. I watched, that was the first rough and rowdy I ever watched. Oh, that was because I saw your tweet afterwards and it fired me up and I kind of like showed it to everyone like fucking uh, Swoggle was, wants in on this. So I was going to ask, like, was that your first exposure to it? Yeah. Yeah. My buddy, my buddy invited me over. He goes, you got to watch these. It's the craziest thing ever. So I actually brought my son and then the first ring girl came out. I go, <laughs> becoming a man tonight, Landon. You're becoming a man tonight. Uh, <laughs> it was just fun. We had a blast. And then Jeremy had his fight. I was like, fuck it. I'm in. Like, here we go. I sent a tweet and it was like instant where was yeah. and I'm like, then it blew up and I was like, we're on to something. And every week it's getting, it's gotten bigger and bigger, especially when we finally got to announce it. It's like, fuck, here we go. We're going, we're going to, I'm just, I'm happy to be on board. And again, we're going to make history. We're going to make history with this fight on Friday. I think so as well. It's like the perfect combination, you know, rough and rowdy as it is already has the hints of pro wrestling in it with the promos, with the ridiculousness, with the over the topness, and then bringing in Hornswoggle, someone that I believe is a future WWE hall of famer. It's going to send it over the edge. It's going to send it over the edge. Now I want to talk about that name Hornswoggle. We can't call you that name. We call you Swoggle on the posters, right? Was there ever a moment in time? Now I know that technically the storyline went back and you're not, Hornswoggle McMahon anymore. Is there ever a moment where you're like, fuck it. When I go on the Indies, I'm going to wrestle as Swoggle McMahon and they're not going to do anything about it. No, no. no. I'm poking the bear too much there. I'm enjoying my money. Because <laughs> uh, when you won the Cruiserweight title, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't it say Hornswoggle McMahon on it? So I have, I have a, in my office, as we speak, I have the title plate. Uh, that says Hornswoggle McMahon because it was does, cool. right? There's two of them. Yeah, when I first wanted it, just said Hornswoggle, and then the title plate said Hornswoggle McMahon, and they, uh, I procured that title plate a couple of years later. Uh, it's pretty awesome. That's right? a fantastic like little thing of memorabilia. Yeah, I have a couple. I have that, and I have a piece of the uh, the WLC table that I asked. I specifically like. I ran to the back. I was like, I need that. Do not throw that away. I need that now. So was that yeah. WLC match like a, a true pinnacle for you? Because just speaking as, like I said, I was in the building that night, the Izod center and oh my God, that crowd was going ape shit for that match. Just I'll like, never, I'll never do anything better than that in my life. I truly won't. And the, um, that's, that's real. That's, that's me being honest. I'll never, I'll never top that. It, uh, it was the best moment of my life. It's amazing. Yeah. And because again, People doubted me. People doubted us. Uh, people thought it was going to be a joke. And we just went out there and killed each other. And it was... Tore the house down. Everyone yeah. out there. Yeah. I mean, Drew McIntyre is running and jumping over the top <laughs> of the table for literally no reason. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy so, bump. Crazy. He was saying to me before the match, he goes... Like, when we were thinking of something, he goes, I want to flip to the outside through that. And I go, why? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> all right and, 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 man it was that mad night was legit magic and like and then the follow-up that no one remembers either because we like worked backwards the hair versus mask match was so much fun in chicago too um yeah we we had some fun was that a payback the chicago one yeah yep. yeah i remember that that was that was a lot of fun as well um that night where you actually got pitched the hornswoggle mcmahon storyline obviously fans know now that wasn't the uh, initial thing that was they were going to go with it was going to be a mr kennedy thing he gets suspended they they change things at the last minute did you find out that day that you're going to be hornswoggle mcmahon 3 30 that afternoon oh my god and what's your reaction to that i was in green bay which is my, my hometown essentially for wrestling and uh i remember bruce pritchard coming up to me i was walking out to the ring for rehearsal that day uh, to go over the whole segment unbeknownst to me obviously and he goes hey come here yep Just give me your your cell phone uh, nope that's not happening <laughs> give me your phone you're going to want to okay i gave him the phone and he goes you're the son i go fuck you he goes, no that you're the son and it's uh i said all right you can watch me can I text one person for, and, and we can leave tickets for him. 
goes, yep. And he watched over my, my shoulder. I, went, I texted my dad. I go, hey, can you and grandpa come to the show tonight? I can't say it. I said, please just come to the show tonight. That's all I can say. Tickets will be waiting for you. That was it. And I gave him back my phone. I hid under the ring from 3.30 till that night. Oh my God, you were under the ring the entire, that, do you have like a monitor? Do they have a setup for you down there at least? For, for TV tape, for TV uh, episodes, I would, I would always have a monitor and a headset, but for live events and untelevised, nothing. Oh my, what would you do down there? I mean, this is like, some of this is before the era of smartphones, right? You can't just scroll Twitter on, on your phone. I, I would bring my PSP underneath, <laughs> Okay. play games, or I would just sleep. I was real good at, I could just fall asleep real easy and then I would pyro or the opening video would wake me up so i knew it was go time uh but i've been under there seven eight hours holy shit that's like you ever have to go to the bathroom never knock on wood i never had to and i don't know how <laughs> that would be like my biggest concern do you remember the the craziest thing you were pitched that never happened no no i mean the the the, the anonymous gm thing was supposed to be a lot more than it was i talk about that a lot in my book uh, life is short and so am i Cheap plug available on Amazon.com, um, but that's that's really it. I'm fuck. May Young gave birth to me. <laughs> Most of the ridiculous ideas seem to yeah well, make it. I, to I ran through a wall somehow through a hole through <laughs> a hole in a wall. Um, yeah, they all went through. Did you know that you know you're a massive wrestling fan? I know this from watching interviews with you and stuff. Did you know that when you left the WWE, you were going to become a shoot interview sensation? <laughs> so that the funny thing is with that is like I just talk honestly. That's the thing. I'm just honest. Well, that is the thing is you're you're sometimes like brutally honest in, in shoot yeah, interviews where, where they they they're able to get the clickbait out of the the like the headlines out of them. You yeah, know what I mean? I'm not like. I feel I don't bury people just to make oh. up stories. I just tell the truth and uh, fuck. Yeah, happens. well, I, I feel like uh, most people when they do them, especially nowadays, really watch their words and like how they say certain things. And yours seems like a casual conversation. Seems like you're shooting the shit. Yeah, but telling it as it is, and that will fake, they come off fake and and uh, thought about is because they're lying a lot of the time. I'm telling the truth, and I'm not gonna. I'm not there to bury anyone i'm just being honest and listen i have i i have so much to thank wwe for oh yeah you never come off bitter no i've never i've not and that's the thing in my book in the interview in every interview i do i've never come off i've never wanted to come off bitter and i, I don't think i ever have and that's because they gave me 10 years of living my absolute dream since i was four years old um so yeah, that's. I would say towards the company itself, as a guy who's like I said, watched many of your shoot interviews and stuff, you come off nothing but gracious towards the company, especially they still bring you back to this day. You know that you came back a few years ago in Saudi, right? The the Royal Rumble and the Royal Rumble, uh, the women's one two years ago. It was it's been a pretty decent run. It really has been. Let me get your final prediction for Friday night before I let you get back to hitting the heavy bag or whatever you're doing to train. I'm focused, man. This is, like I say, I'm, I've taken this thing completely seriously uh, with my diet, with training, with hiring a boxing coach, something I've never thought I would have done. A buddy of mine texted me yesterday, said, hey, I just ordered the fight for Friday. I, he, and then he texted me the thing. I said, oh, thanks, man. He goes, I can't believe that I just sent you that text because I never thought since all the time, I've known this guy for 15, 20 years, because I've never thought in all this time I would have texted you, I ordered your fight. And uh, I said, I said, man, it's just like all those manias I worked. You're just watching at home live on pay-per-view. He goes, I wish I could cancel my order. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, but you know what? This one's not like all those manias because this time you're in the main event, baby. That's the thing, man. Like, that's crazy. I, I expect it to be like the opening thing. Fuck no, it. Come on. Let's I'm let's use our heads here. You are I'm the main guy. event here, baby. I'm yeah. I'll shoot from the hip. Uh I like I keep saying Jeremy Smith is gonna become an a known name. I was gonna say way. Jeremy Smith is also a top guy. Let's not sell him short. I see what you did there, asshole. That wasn't even that was Jeremy. Okay, Jeremy Smith is a top guy to his 200 followers. He is. 
to, to the rough and rowdy crowd, to the rough and rowdy purchasers, they, they know the world's strongest. That's They fine. see all the videos of him deadlifting, the videos of him right. benching, right? Yeah. Son of a bitch. I, <laughs> that's great. That is great. Jeremy Smith, those, the, the 200 followers you have is going to multiply, add about four more zeros after Friday. I'm going to get him over. I'm going, either way, I'm going to make people actually know who he is because I'm, I'm a star. And there he is, a star he is. Ladies and gentlemen, this Friday night, buy rnr.com. It's buy a pay-per-view R&R. you're R&R. not going to want to miss. Port, rough and rowdy. Watch me on pay-per-view once again. Been on pay-per-view a lot of times. Here's a main event. It's time this Friday, five days away. We'll be right back.